The sun is barely up, and already there are hundreds of dromedaries, as well as hundreds of farmers and buyers who've come from all over Sudan. Market day is very important. We've come all the way from Darfur. It took us almost a month to come here with our dromedaries. The El Molih market is one of the largest in Africa. There are no fences or pens here, so to prevent the animals from fleeing, their legs are tied together. The auctioning begins, and it's quite a show. The men whisper prices in each other's ears, and a mediator serves as the link between vendors and buyers. <laughs> There's no paperwork here, nothing is signed. The wads of money are passed on from person to person, and sometimes things get heated. The strong-armed bartering is a part of the ritual a game of bluff for all of those involved. It's a tough deal. These people are Bedouins, they've come a long way and they don't trust people easily. Most of the dromedaries here are sold for their meat, which is especially popular in the Horn of Africa and in the Middle East. Sudan exports a quarter of a million dromedaries each year. This man is a dromedary trader. It's his specialty, and he knows how to choose them. First, you look here. And then you say, approximately, this is 300 kilos. You can sell from here, from here, from the neck also. So this is the main three places you look at. And you have to look the legs also. No problem, no injuries. Not all dromedaries are sold for meat, though. They can be used for transport and also for racing. In that case, prices skyrocket, up to a million euros for the biggest champions. Race dromedaries must belong to the Bashari breed, the best there is. They must be sharp, fast and have the mindset of a winner. Dromedaries have been a part of life in Sudan since forever. Nomads in their caravans have crisscrossed this area for centuries. Humans and dromedaries even have a shared past. According to historians, their lives have been intertwined for more than 4,000 years.